Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again, and I'm doing a video in response to a viewer request. Uh, the viewer requested to see how to repartition a drive for a triple boot scenario, where you might have, say, Windows XP and is Ubuntu installed on the same drive. So what I did, I created a virtual box. I have Windows XP installed on one partition. That's this 11 gig volume you see here. And I have Zubuntu 13.10 installed on the next partition. And I installed it so that um, using Zubuntu's install alongside Windows option, so the entire half of the second of the drive was used for Zubuntu. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reboot onto my Antics Live CD and show you how to repartition a drive. Here we are, the Antics Live CD, and we're going to just crank out the Antics full. This uh, Gparted is the tool we're going to use to repartition the drives. It's available in the Control Center or in the Antics menu under Preferences. Okay, so here we are, and we're going to go ahead and go into the Control Center, and it's going to be System. Actually, it's not. It's going to be Disks and partition a drive. This is the root password. And now Gparted, this is the GNOME partition editor. This is going to give us a view, a graphical view of what our partitions look like. And you see I have one SDA1. It's at NTFS. That's the NT file system. That's what Windows XP and Windows 7 use. Windows 8 for that matter. You see I have SDA5. SDA5 is an EXT4 partition. That is my current Zubuntu partition. And what Zubuntu's installer did by default is it created this SDA2, which is actually, if you see, called an extended partition. What this is, it's a container for multiple logical partitions. Um, it, that, that, this is a whole video in and of itself. But this is what Zubuntu is going to do by default. Now you can see the, the swap and the Zubuntu partition are both inside the SDA2 extended partition. This is a old holdover to the old uh, to the, the way the hard, hard drive partitions work when you're talking about MBRs. Um, be, uh, you can have more can have more than four primary partitions and that's what Windows sits on. Linux doesn't care if it's in a primary partition so I usually put just one Linux, Windows primary and then all my other partitions in a big extended which is just what Zubuntu did so we're all happy. So the first thing we have to do, you see I have a no free space so the first thing we need to do is resize SDA5, the Zubuntu partition so we have some space freed up for Antics. Now Antics needs not really but we're gonna make it six gigabytes just because if we look here it, this tells us how many are used. We see the Zubuntu partition is 11 gigs we're using 3.15 unused 7.86 so I'm going to go ahead and do a right click on that and click resize and I'm going to make it um, uh, 6 gigabytes. You can also drag this little arrow around if you uh, if you if you can be that precise. I normally can't. Let's see. And you can use little arrows to fine tune it like so. And hit resize. This is going to give you a warning about moving a partition might cause you not. Whoops! I see what I did. Where you're going to un? This is a good time to show you the undo. I uh, did not want to put free space in front of it. I only wanted free space behind it. So six one four four. Let's make sure that this number stays zero, and it does this time. Okay. So there we go. No warnings this time. So we're going to shrink the Ubuntu position down to to five gigs, and we're going to make a new partition. EXT2 logical. Uh, I'm going to label it Antics. You don't have to label it, but I'm going to label it Antics um, using all the rest of the space. So here is what. Now we have made no changes yet. Down this list down here shows you what's going to be changed. So we're going to shrink dev.sda5 down from 11 to 5 and create a new partition which will be formatted by default ext2 6 gigabytes on dev.sda you can format whatever you want the annex installer is going to for reformat it ext4 most installers are going to reformat the drive anyway so I just make it something simple you can see we haven't touched the swap and we don't need to so we click apply 
Are you sure? Yes. Now I should take this moment, this is going to take about a minute to do, and I should take a moment to mention backing up your data. Backing up your data, if you're going to shrink a partition with your data on it, you really need to have a backup copy of that data someplace else. Because even though 99 times out of 100 when you do this you're not going to have any problems, that one time could be devastating if you're losing all the family photos. So word of the wise, back up the data beforehand. Okay, so we're done, we're resized. You see we now have an SDA7 that's labeled Antics, format ext2, and we're good to go. We can start the installer. Now in Antics's case, you could have done the you could have done used the partition editor from the installer. I always I don't know, I'm kinda of old school. I like to have my partition ends line before I run the installer. And I'm not going to install on this video. I'm just going to show you what it looks like in the Annex installer. And give you a couple other uh, things to look for. Yep. Okay, so use this SDA, modify partitions, run partition tool, that's the tool we just used. And we say you're going to click on custom install and existing partitions. And up here we're going to say SDA7, which is our Linux partition. Swap, you don't need to specify it, we have one, it'll use it. And we're going to do ext4. And now it's going to reformat and make the new root partition. This is going to take a minute. I'm going to pause, and then we'll uh, we'll come back when at the end. I know I said I wasn't going to install, but uh, I wanted to show you something with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, installing the MBR at the end. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you in the video. Most a lot of Linux installers, particularly ones geared towards newer users don't give you the option to not install grub. Now what grub is, is the boot, the antics bootloader. That's that menu at the front where you select Zubuntu or Windows if you're dual booting, if you're using Zubuntu. The, the, whatever grub you install last is going to be the grub that controls the boot process for all the other operating systems. You need to be aware of that. Um, you can the Antics installer gives you the option to not install it. If you don't install it, uh, you'll have to update the menu in Zubuntu or whatever other distro you're using to boot Antics, which is very easy. It, it, you can do it just fine. Um, if you're, um, I leave it up to you to, to know how to do that. If I install Grub here, then the, my Grub, the, the Zubuntu Grub window is going to go away. The boot menu is going to go away, and you're going to get the Antics one. I'm not going to install it, but you'll have, but I'll have to update Grub later. Okay, so install is finished. We're going to reboot. And what you're going to see is the Grub2 menu from Zubuntu pop back up, but Antics is not going to be on it. That is because it hasn't updated. So we're going to boot into Zubuntu and we're going to update the Grub menu. Okay, now we're here in Zubuntu. We're going to open up the terminal. And we're going to do sudo update grub. Now see this line where it says found Debian GNU Linux, GNU Linux on 7.2 on slash DVA slash SDA7? That is our Annex install. So when we restart, we can boot into Annex from the install. Whoops, I didn't want to shut down. That's okay. Oh, and we see we have Debian GNU Linux 7.2. And this is Antics firing up to life. Now, the one thing it doesn't do is put in some of the cool... You're going to see a lot more text doing this with Antics anyway because um, the quiet feature isn't plugged in by default. So... And there you go. Your install... You got now have three Linuxes, or actually two Linuxes and Windows on the same hard disk. For tips, tricks, how to's, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.